hi guys welcome welcome how are you all doing today decided to use something a little different and run into some technical issues but i am right here right now so it is sunday chit chat and today we're going to talk about oils yes you guys tend to like those shows with the oils my screen tend to look a little dark today but I've okay. I think that's all coming from me. So, guys, it's Sunday chit chat. And if you're new here, a warm welcome to you. Okay, much better. If you're new here, a warm welcome to you. What is going on? I went on my iMac only to find that I was not able to log in, trying to find my password, couldn't get in. So, I had to turn right back to my um my laptop so now we are broadcasting from the laptop and i hope it's coming across you know as it should as usual with sunday chit chat we chat we talk about things and we basically spend an hour together i'm just happy to be here because i can't believe i finally logged in even though i was a bit late now also i'm trying to fix my background while i'm talking to you that's how much i was not prepared for using my laptop today but it's all good and this is what happened when you are broadcasting live so what are you all up to today um yeah what are you all up to today i am here and we're not using Streamyard today we're actually using the youtube flat platform so i hope you all got the messages pretty pretty early to log in tracy yeah i'm watching from miami pilar samala you look great thank you for that marcia joseph good afternoon hi my friend claudia magdalene amina who else is here who amina how is your sore throat going and um let's see who is on the top erica is on also here georgia um um ta you know i'm gonna mess up your name palmer and break up a people jackie mom inga k hi inga k t t t lock it isabel welcome so dorothy um edley i think this is the first time i'm seeing you on here welcome to our live chat cynthia you're here how is it going cold today right it's very very cold today in new york city we're gonna talk if you have oily skin go ahead and comment right now let me hear you start commenting and while you're at it if you have just joined go ahead give the video a thumbs up to let us know that you are here and so far you are liking our channel when you want to support the channel you support the channel by showing some love by giving us a thumbs up and also by commenting that is how the system know that you are enjoying the show and that you are supporting your favorite uh, channel so oil oily skin that's what we're going to focus on today if you have oily skin we want you to comment hi key how are you i'm going to get in touch with you key so send me an email a quick email update me with the phone number so i could have it right on top of all those many emails that i have that's going to help me tremendously all right so guys if you have oily skin we want you to start commenting right now because we are going to dive into oily skin we're going to talk all we can talk about oily skin and in between hi sandra levy how are you in between i'm going to take your questions so oily skin people start to comment right now i kind of omit the dry skin because i just want to focus on oily skin today now most people that have oily skin tend to also have blackheads and whitehead they also tend to have large open pores and also they tend to have rough looking skin all of that is because the dead skin cells seep into those pores with all that grease and cause the skin to look you know if you ever look on some people and you could see the pores just shining right through like they have a lot of small holes in their face that are much obvious those are hope and pores and those are also caused from most cases oily skin so we're going to show you actually give you some tips and how you can take care of your oily skin not only that we're also going to share some oils that you can use on your skin if you have oil oily skin most people think that no 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 we're not going to use oil on our skin today because if we use oil it's going to create even more problem that is not so you just have to need to know just have to know what kind of oil to use so how do people get oily skin you get oily skin when the skin produces excess sebum if you see the word sebum anywhere it means that is the oil that is produced by the skin everyone produces oil on the skin 
all skin type have some form of oil. However, some people tend to get more oil than some. And that is because of the function of the body. Some people, the skin is all uniform and it produces just the amount of oil to keep the skin hydrated. While some people um, just produce a little under and when that happens, you have dry skin. Some people produce excess oil, and that is what causes oily skin. When you have oily skin, it means that your body thinks that your skin is dry. And because it thinks your skin is dry, it keeps pumping out the oil so that it could, you know, keep the skin in, 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 in one straight condition, meaning that it has to keep the skin hydrated. But in all fairness, the skin is already hydrated. So there's way too much oil that is pumping from your skin. To take care of that, here are some simple tips and simple tricks that you can follow. If you are into skincare, it makes it even better. The most important thing to know is that you got to wash your face on a regular. I suggest you wash that face at least two to three times per day. Most people is going to wash their face at least twice per day in the a.m. and in the p.m., especially if you are a busy person. Now, once that is out of the way, you definitely going to start to treat that oily skin. And yes, it can be treated. And when you are treating your oily skin, it does not mean that you're going to avoid everything that contain oil. No, they are oils out there that that can actually help the skin. The most important thing to note is that they have to be light oils. So if you have oily skin, here is another tip for you. I suggest that you also start to steam your face. And why are you going to be steaming that face? You're going to steam the face because you want those pores to be open. And when those pores are open, they are easily cleaned. And when the pores are cleaned, it also helps the skin to produce less oil. So let's take some questions and then we are going to move on. Er um, Ariat, I have oily skin, especially on my face, mom. And, and you, as you said, rightly said, I sometimes see large pores. And yes, that's what not what normally happen. Emily, how old are you, if you wouldn't mind? Wow, I tend to get that a lot. Go ahead and just guess. I mean, most people that is watching my OG subscribers and even my new subscribers, they all know how old I am. I am pretty old. Well, I am not pretty old. Nowadays, my age is like, I'm just ready to, you know, to take the world by a storm. Years ago, my age was considered old, but no, but I am not a chicken. <laughs> I'm not a chicken. I am a full grown woman, midway into life, a little over midway. So take a guess on that. All right. So Sandra, good. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you. Yolanda, what about dark spots? Those also occur when you tend to have a lot of oil going on on the skin. Most of the time when you get pigmentation on the skin, it is due from like acne scars. It is due from those little pimples that you tend to get from time to time. And it is also due from having those blackheads and whiteheads when you squeeze those out and you leave that little mark in most of the time, that is how you get those spots. And most of the time, those are also go straight back to having oily skin. I do know sometimes people have dry skin and they do tend to get the blackheads also so, but we're going to dissect that a little more. Now, Claudia, um, who are you calling pretty old? I'm the same age. <laughs> Claudia, 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 Claudia. All right. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Years ago, I would never, ever say that. As a matter of fact, I used to tell people that I was 36 for a long time, like a long time. I kind of stopped doing that since like, you know, I have my YouTube channel and I gained a few pounds. I stopped telling people that I am like 36, but I was 36 for about 10 years or so. But now I am actually proud of my age. I don't hide it anymore. It is what it is. And I am enjoying life and I'm healthy. And that is what is more important. I mean, let's call it. She can't herself with that. Okay, whatever. All right, so we are moving on. So we're talking about oily skin, guys. And we are asking you, especially if you're new to our channel, go ahead and comment, 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 and also let us know what is your skin type. Now, we, if you're here for the three oils that we're going to talk about for oily skin, do not click off. Just continue watching. We're getting there. But I'm not just going to throw some oils on you. I want you to know exactly how to take care of those oily skin 
that you have. How many of you watch and use any form of a powder on your face? Years ago, when you have oily skin, they used to suggest that you use a facial powder to keep the oil down. One of the main reasons for that is most facial powder have cornstarch. And that is why we use a lot of cornstarch on this channel. Most of you are not aware that most facial powder, not only facial powder, body powder is also rigged with cornstarch. And that is because the cornstarch have absorbing properties. So when you apply it on your skin, it's get rid of that excess oil that the skin produces. But you can actually have oily skin and even stay away from using any form of a powder on your face once you learn how to take care of that oily skin. And you can also get rid of the oily skin, believe it or not. We also know that for some people, the environment and all of that have a lot to do with, you know, how their skin look. Like if you live in a warm country, you're constantly sweating. You definitely know that when you rub your hands across, it might feel a little greasy but feeling a little greasy is not necessarily that you have oily skin it could be that the body is just warm at that time but to know if you have oily skin is when you constantly have grease on the skin whether you're in a warm climate yes or no once it's constant and once you start to see all those little you know acne and you know those little thing going on on the skin you definitely know that is oily skin and if, if you are you know you have oily skin no matter what you do the skin is still oily that's how you know if you have oily skin so back to steam in the face we talk about that all the time on this channel and this is for the re a reason if you have oily skin it should be your best friend yes it should be your best friend and you need to do it at least three times per week this is going to cut back on the oiliness on the skin and once you are done with that, then you need to use a good facial cleanser. Now, here is the trick with cleanser, okay? Now, if you have normal skin, you could use any cleanser you so choose. If you have oily skin, we do suggest that you stay away from cleanser that are oil-based. We're not telling you to stay away from cleanser oil-based because you can use oil, but it's also best to use a lighter cleanser, a more of a water-based cleanser. And here's the trick on this channel. If you are looking for a natural facial wash to use, that is gonna help your oily skin. We have a bunch on this channel. All you have to do is just go on my channel page and type in natural facial wash and you can use some of those to wash your face. It's going to cut the grease from the skin and it's also going to leave the skin fresh looking without any form of a soap and also without any form of oil. Those are some good ones. Quick, quick, quick little trick. If you have oily skin, you can actually just blend some oatmeal, add a little bit of a lemon juice to it and use it to wash your face. And you can actually do that for an entire week, seven days straight, some crumbled oatmeal with some um, or, or lemon juice or even some orange juice or some grapefruit juice. You wash your face with that at the end of the week, your skin is going to feel different. It's going to look better and you're going to notice you have less oil. Simple as that. Little oatmeal and a little lemon. You don't believe me? If you don't believe me, just try it this week, okay? If you have some oatmeal, just blend a little into a powder and put some lemon juice in it for this week. As a matter of fact, you can cut that lemon into, dip it in that powder oatmeal and just use it and wash your face. Because of the citric acid, acid is going to cut down on that oil on the skin. But when you finish washing your face with that, you're going to use your favorite moisturizer, but you can also go ahead and use one of the oil that we're going to share with you today. So that is one quick tip right there for you. Let's move on. If you're just joining, welcome. Give us a thumbs up. If you're watching and you have not yet thumbs it up, that's how you support the channel. You <coughs> the one day that I didn't bring water in. But anyway, sorry guys. You support the channel by giving the video a thumbs up and also by commenting. That is what's going to help the channel to, you know, to excel. That's what's going to help more people to find the channel. So when you're supporting your good old channel, always, always remember to log in, thumbs it up, and don't forget to share. So if you're just joining us, we are... And I know why it choked, you know, all of this is coming from Amina. Amina is just having a ball talking about my age. Okay. And so that is why I'm reading some of the comments while I'm talking and I am choking on it. But 
the person that asked the question about my age, you're watching a family channel where we all, you know, are like a group of people that are really tight knit. So we tend to play around and we tend to talk a lot about age on this channel. So never mind. You can go ahead and you can guess. But if you don't mind, the person who asked my age, can you please tell us your age? Because most likely you're new to the channel. So we might give you some amazing tips and how to get your skin to look amazing. All right. So Sophia, I teach you and everyone. Welcome. I Keisha, I Razi. Um, um, yes, Claudia, I'm older than her and I am not old. All right, guys, I got you all. I got you. I got you. I got you. Got you. Got you. Some people should be taking care of their short throat instead of their, their chewing words on me. All right. So we are moving on to oily skin. We're just talking about oily skin today. And if you're just joining, you have oily skin, go ahead and comment and ask some question. We are here to help you. We're going to share about three oils. But before we get into the oils, we are also telling you how to take care of your oily skin some of the best practice that you can you know adapt to so to have your skin looking less greasy what did you miss so far in 15 minutes nothing much we just share you thought about washing the skin also steam in the face and now we are on to answering a few questions and then we're gonna move on so um sophia um 51 years old and get what sophia i am actually older than you all right so that's all i'm saying i'm older than you for real for real for real all right so we are moving on and sherry hi everyone hi margaret hi how are you guys if you're new to our channel it's the new year so i'm excited to see some of my subscribers just logging on so that's if you hear me getting excited calling people out don't you know don't click off it's a family affair here and if you watch very often you i will also start calling you out when you log on so we're talking about oily skin and if you have a question on oily skin go ahead and ask the question right now because it's all about sharing tips and how to get your face to look good and less greasy now how many of you have oily skin with large open pores when we talk about large open pores we're talking about the little holes that is going on and for some people i don't even have a picture to show some people when you have oily skin um it could look really really bad now i um was talking about this oh my phone is off i was talking about um, a couple of, probably over a year ago, I was sharing a little, a little insight on when I was growing up. When I was growing up, there was this uh, gentleman that lived in our community. Um, I'm Jamaican, so we don't call it community; we call it district. So this man lived in our little area, and uh, we as kids, we were like actually scared of this man, and we were scared of him not because of anything else but his face. And it's kind of sad for me to, to talk about this now, now, knowing what I know now. But yes, as children, we were scared of him. And the reason, the face, not a ugly man, no, not a idiot, no, not a grumpy little man, no. It's actually a man where I like don't like to talk about skin, but yes, I'm going to say probably we would have called that man light skin, but his face was gross. And you're gonna ask me, how can you say someone's face is gross? Now I know what is going on with the skin. He has severe, severe oily skin. And because he has severe oily skin and he don't take care of his skin any at all, you could see the big round blackheads like looking at you like that. You could see the sink, like all kind of things, face everywhere, like like right, really, 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 really bad. Like now at my age, I wish I could meet that person. Well, that person probably passed and gone a long time because I was a kid and he was grown at the time. But now I know different. Now I understand. But as kids, that grossed us out. And that's how bad it was fatty and right now there are a lot of people because i get a lot of pictures believe it or not from some of my faithful subscribers that do have that kind of a skin issue going on that person all he had was to do and he was living in the country where you have access to grapefruit orange you have apples you have bananas you have all of these amazing fruit that you can actually use to scrub that face and get rid of all that grease but when you're not exposed to taking care of your skin then this is what happened now i feel bad you know that as kids we were scared of this man because he have oily skin severe oily skin 
so bad that it turned into, I call them sinkhole. If you have another name for it, guys, go ahead and let me know. But they were obvious. And if you watch, there was this lady on YouTube and she used to, um, most of her videos are about her extracting blackheads and um, clock pores. Um, so I can't remember the name, Dr. Something Something. And those videos get like millions of views because people are fascinated by getting all that grease out. And that is the kind of face that I am talking about. That is how excess oil can bring your skin to if you don't nip it in the butt. Okay. You got to nip it in the butt and some skin type and so have it going on. You don't have to, it don't have to happen. You can change your diet. Okay. You can change what you eat. I have a cousin and I think I shared this before, and she couldn't eat like ice cream and stuff like that because whenever she had those kind of things to eat, then her face would break out and she had oily skin also, like oily skin where you could look at her face and you could tell that she had oily skin. So she started to try to avoid eating certain kind of a food and all of that good stuff to see if it could bring her skin to looking good. However, Eating right, have, but along with taking care of the skin. So you eat the food, like a lot of food with the B vitamins and the C vitamins, the broccoli, the lettuce, the, you know, people key going raw and all of that kind of thing. You can eat all of that good stuff. But along with that, you got to also pay attention topically to the skin because the environment and the everything out there also contribute to the skin looking bad. So for some people, you can eat your way through changing your skin and drinking water along with washing it and, you know, doing a little thing. While for some people, they really have to put out that extra, extra, extra effort to shrink um, those large pores and get the skin to look good. Margaret, I've been told that person with oily skin would have youthful feature i accept that you have also helped me to control the excess oil thank you so much for that comment anna exactly with me sophia so sophia i have combination skin my t-zone is oily but the rest of it is normal or dry and yes we do have combination skin out there but you're gonna find that most people with combination skin is not gonna experience that severe you know blackheads and large pores. that because 99 percent of people that have combination skin is only the t-zone area that is oily and if you do your research and you hear people talk about combination skin you're not going to hear people talking about oh my cheekbones is so is so oily and then here is all dry most of the time is the t-zone that is oily so combination skin is an easy fix it's an easy fix however however there are you got to ex know exactly how to take care of the skin also and i like to patch um treat areas let's you can use two products that's a that's a thing you can use two different products and you know how to apply products on your skin if you do when you have combination skin you can get by you have the oil in the t-zone area then you take care of that and then you put light oil on the rest of your face and so on and so forth i just saw a comment um jennifer i teach your sister from jamaica i caught you live and welcome to our live Jennifer Burke and um Amina advanced birthday greeting to Anne Marie and Esther um party doing a nice pretty party doing a nice pot spa day at home okay yes because how many of you well let's not talk about the spa because I am still not in a in a in a zone where I would want to visit a spa right now unless it's as, at home as you know I'm still on the little like oh I ain't going there too much things going on all right so we are Esther a good healthy and clean diet is also key to great skin thank you for that Esther and we just mentioned that 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 actually could add if you're just joining we're here and we're talking about oily skin we're taking questions and we are also sharing some tips and how to get that oily skin looking good um um nishi Singh, i'm 40 years old male and i have learned a lot from you thank thank you for that i think i messed up the first name is it nisha 
Nishi or Nisha. Um, Esther, everyone blessing. Magdalene, okay, talking. Diana, hi, Diana. I'm Mary. My skin is super, super oily. What to do, please? Okay, so thank you for that comment, and that's what we're here to tell you. The first thing we mentioned is that you need to wash your face at least twice per day, and we also ask you to wash your face with a non-oil-based cleanser, and if you're trying some of our homemade remedy, we gave one recipe where you can use some oatmeal with some lemon juice or lime or even some grapefruit juice i like grapefruit i like to use grapefruit on my skin but you know most of the time you don't have it in abundance like that but if you do because some of you live places where you could get that fresh old grapefruit and here's a trick guys if you have grapefruit to spare you can take a big old grapefruit cut it in two go in your bathroom squeeze some shower gel on it and take it and rub from your face all the way down to your toe you're gonna tap me for that later because you're going to come out of the bathroom feeling like you don't want nothing to touch your skin, how clean the skin is. All of those citric fruit, you can use them to wash your skin, and especially if you have oily skin. Now, I'm, I do understand that some of us live places where we spend a good bit of a penny, let's say for grapefruit. We can't afford to use grapefruit to wash our body every day, but some of you live at places... Hello, my Jamaican subscribers. Hello, my Caribbean subscribers. Hello, my subscribers from Florida. LA and all of these kind of places where the time is warm and you have all those fruit trees that you can actually go and pick your fruit, you can actually use this thing to to cleanse your skin. The thing I know is that when you have things in abundance, you do not respect it. When you have things in abundance, you do not respect it. And that is the truth. Okay, I live here. I live in New York. I'm Jamaican. And guess what? I used to like mangoes. And I talked the other day, we were talking about it. I don't like to buy mangoes here because it don't taste as good. It don't taste as sweet. And when I was back home, we just throw mango out. We toss mango out. We bite it. We throw it away. And now I have to be paying a pretty penny and searching, searching to get a, ma a good mango. Now, apples... And I'm talking about if you are in the camera, some people call it separate apples. We call American apple, American apples. Um, you know, I might look a little when I'm saying this, even though I know better now, but I got to say, you know, how we, we normally say it. Now, we would do anything to get one of those apples that we don't grow. We will do anything to get it. We think it's better than our little apple and all of that. So what I'm trying to say, sometimes you have things around you that are really, really good. And because it's so it's so good, but it's so much, it's such an in abundance, you think it's no good. For instance, if, if any one of you like, you like to eat certain kind of a food, right? And you grow like you get spinach in abundance. You don't want to eat spinach. Okay, you think that spinach is no good. It's too common. You don't want that. You'd want to go and get some, probably like some bread broccolini or something like that that you don't grow any at all and far fetch you, you it's, it's costing you a good penny but you think it's living good because you're gravitating to things that is not in abundance sometimes we need to stop and just look around us and use what is available we were talking um a couple of months ago and we were talking about um marula oil and I have to pay for marula oil, okay? And marula oil, depending on where you live, costs a bit of a penny, okay? Because it's not in abundance. But here come Ilma saying that they use marula oil to take care of certain things. And it is like stoning dogs, you know, if anybody know that term. So we are here trying to reach, get this marula oil. And marula oil is somewhere else, like in abundance. And that's also go for argan oil. If you're like in Morocco and Spain and these kind of places, somewhere, 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 you just put no value in argan oil. Yes, still, if you come here and you try to buy it, and like us living here in America, it's so for, I almost use it a word that I'm not supposed to use here, but it's expensive and you got to put out a lot for it. Okay. But you want it because you hear it's so good, but you're not thinking that, oh my goodness, I could just don't bother with that oil here. And let me go use what we have in abundance here, like probably some grapeseed oil or something like that. So all I'm trying to tell you is to look around you and utilize what you have. A quick story. And this is a true story. I actually, um, I went to Argentina and I was actually shocked by their practice, their culture, like 
like really, really shocked. And the reason why I was shocked is the fact that when you go to the grocery store, and this is a true story, and if you're from Argentina, correct me if I'm wrong, when you go to the grocery store, you notice that there are no imported goods, none. Everything is locally grown. Everything is fresh and everything tastes better. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, guys, but that's, that, that's my experience. Everything is locally grown. There's no imported goods. You turn up, you pick something up, you turn it over. Made in Argentina. If you're from Argentina, you're watching, correct me. I don't know if things change now, but that was my experience. They are utilizing what they have what they produce and that is what you need to do utilize what is around you make the best of it and it don't necessarily have to be about skincare maybe i'm talking to somebody today it don't have to be necessarily about skincare it could also be about you on a whole like living within your means and make the best of what you can afford and use what you have available to you, you stop straining to get things that you can't afford. I'm not saying not to reach for the glass ceiling, not to reach for the sky because the sky is the limit. I'm not saying not to do that, but on your way up, try to make the best of what you have. Not because the neighbor go buy a new car, it don't mean you need a new car, okay? Not because the neighbor shop at the fanciest supermarket around or only eat gourmet food or organic food, it don't mean that you have to eat it unless you can afford to buy it okay i'm not saying you can try things at times but you need to live within your means and when you start to appreciate what is around you then you're going to find that other things going to come you see other things is going to come because you learn to accept and move on anyway back to skincare guys sometimes i stray don't know why i'm straying today let me take some question and we're going to go back if you're just joining we're going to share some oil for oily skin it's all about oily skin and i stray because you know i was telling you use up that grapefruit if you have enough get some apples crush it up wash your face with it put a little lemon in it for your oily skin and while you're at it how many of you believe in extracting blackheads and whitehead from the skin and how many are you watching believe in using your fingers to squeeze out that grease from the pores if you believe in it go ahead and comment and if you don't believe in doing that tell us why go ahead let me hear you comment and if you're just joining and you didn't give us a thumbs up go ahead and show some love we have 80 thumbs up right now we need to get this to at least 100 thumbs up so look below you're going to see the up up and down click on the up right now if you have not yet thumbs the video up get us to 100 thumbs up at least the system will see a balance in how many people watching and how many people you know really enjoying our show today so that's how you know if you don't even want to come in you give the video a thumbs up that show that you're liking the channel all right so um sophia chichi you speak the truth thank you so much for that um margaret um this is um, finding it difficult to find the store bought all of an aloe vera does not do the cream justice. Yes. OK, let me take that comment right now. One of the reasons why I tend to use two separate um, aloe vera on the channel, that is because when you use the store bought aloe vera gel for your leave on treatment, it do give it a better consistency. It do preserve it for longer. Now, if you're using the fresh aloe vera gel to make like your serum and stuff like that, if you look at some of my older videos, I do use the fresh aloe vera gel to make certain kinds of a serum, but they expire like within seven days it's the longest you can keep it because you know it's it's gonna go bad because there's no preservative one way i find that you can use a fresh aloe you have to it's a must that you blend it okay and the aloe vera gel need to be fresh it need to be fresh so what you're gonna do you're gonna blend it that's just a quick way to preserve it even though the store bought is gonna make it better and the reason why it's better because some of them have this acid that they use it and when they use that acid in it it give it that jelly and we talk about this on the channel before they give it that gel like consistency and that is why it is good you know that you can use to make the serum and all of that but if you only have the fresh aloe vera gel listen carefully what you can do you get that aloe vera gel out and you blend the aloe vera gel once you blend the aloe vera gel what you're gonna do you are gonna get um 
a double broiler or you normally know how I just hot put the glass jar in that hot water and you're going to put it over that hot water. And what you're going to do, you're going to keep constantly spin it around, spin it around, spin it around for probably about three to four minutes or so. You're not going to put it directly on the stove. It definitely need a double broiler because you do not want to kill the properties, the amazing vitamins that is in the olive vera gel. And when you slowly turn it over the heat, it's going to warm it up a bit. What is happening when you do that? It's almost like it's cooking it without cooking it, if you get the gist. And once that is done, it means that you can keep it longer. Then you blend it again in the blender. It's going to get lighter. And that is how you can actually use it in your overnight serum and stuff like that and it's not gonna feel all that slimy that you feel like you want to rinse it off i promise you guys i'm gonna make a video and show you how to get this done and you can try it at home for yourself especially some of you who have that aloe vera jelly you want to make those overnight cream and you want to make the serum but you're not getting that consistency that you need one of my favorite aloe vera gel to use i don't have it down here is one that is pretty pretty watery and that is how it's gonna be when you make the one for yourself at home this aloe vera gel you notice i use it a lot in this kind of a bottle that look black but it's really green and that is just liquidy that is really how real aloe vera gel look once you put it through a process like what i'm sharing with you it's going to be like run it's not going to be that jelly 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 just a little bit of a gel and when you do that um if you have any form of a vegetable glycerin, then if, if you don't, it's okay. But if you have a little vegetable glycerin, you add a little bit to it, and then you can actually keep that in your refrigerator. And that's probably go up to at least two weeks or so because it's kind of steam and that's make it better. Try it for yourself, guys, and come back and share you're finding if you're just joining we're talking about oil and we're talking about oily skin if you have not yet thumbs the video up we need 12 more thumbs up right now if you'd forget to thumbs the video up go ahead thumbs it up we need to get to 100 thumbs up at least right now and margaret is using the cornstarch i'm trying the cornstarch for the overnight mask but the fluff effect i did not get but the mask is still okay so um different blender did you blend it let me hear if you if you blend it because i'm not sure which one of the recipe you're talking about but let me hear from you if you blend it now if you're just joining guys we're talking about facial oils but oily skin three amazing oils that you can use to get rid of oily skin we just talk about aloe vera gel because we use a lot and it's really amazing on the skin so we share how to take care of the skin and i was asking you guys how many of you think about squeezing gel i squeeze a white head and it's um result in basal cell thank you very much all right so um i have black i have black on my nose i scrub it hard not good at all if you remove blackheads and pimples with your finger on your face it usually leave holes on the face and um um let's see who else is commenting on what i asked about michelle see use tool not finger um no uh, squeezing um i ayala g my skin is oily my blackheads are mostly around my nose cheek area what kind of their night moisturizer should i use and we're going to answer that and who else is commenting let me see if i miss something i have combination skin okay i read that before all right so let's talk about um, Denise, in Canada, if I didn't get mangoes from Jamaica, I don't eat. <laughs> Likewise. All right, so we are moving on. All right, so let's talk about using your fingers to squeeze your face. The reason why, believe it or not, there's nothing really wrong with using the fingers. And some of you are going to be like, what? One of the reasons why they don't suggest you use your fingers to squeeze is because of bacteria you might not be aware that bacteria tend to form under your nails and that is why if you like me that wear nails i tend to brush under my nails like when i go take my shower i brush under my nail i tend to do these things because you know there are certain things practice and you know that i um do that i have to make sure my hands are clean and this week i yes i'm wearing nails i have not wore nails for 
about two years now, guys. Correct me. You are my diabetes subscribers, you know. And lo, lo and behold, I used to wear nails before when I just start my channel. I love having nice looking nails, okay? And this week again, as soon as I get back into nails, someone comment on my channel. And I, I'm, I'm going to find a way to share this without, you know, the system think I'm saying something bad. Someone comment on my channel this week and they was like, and it's one of my new videos too. Um, oh my goodness. OMG those long nails how do you wash your and the a word and once the first word is start with a and the next one starts with h and i just smile because i was saying to myself that is one part of my body that i wash really really well okay too much information but yes so, so, but people just comment some really thing things Sometimes they don't think that is a real person behind the camera. So I was tempted to answer. And then I like, no, no, no. You don't just get caught up in that kind of negativity. Now, earlier on, when I just start my channel, I used to be offended by those things. Nowadays, it's like a joke to me because, you know, people watch, they don't know you. I'm a very, very clean person. So that's like a joke to me. But anyway, we are getting back and like treating myself it's the new year why not put something that i personally like that i can do for me there are gloves if you're gonna do something you to your face and you're not sure about your hands you can stick your hands in a glove okay now i was saying that it's not recommended to squeeze your face with your fingers because of the bacteria and not all or not only that sometimes when you squeeze your finger depend on the edge of your finger it might not be too smooth it could cut your skin so that is not recommended however they have different kind of uh, blackhead um whitehead extractor those that you press on the skin like this and you could scoop it out like if you want get it professionally done you're gonna notice that they're gonna um they're gonna use those little things yes you can use those however my philosophy on that is if it's really far gone believe it or not and this is what i personally believe in if you have those severe blackheads and if you don't believe me give it a try this week steam the face steam your face at least three times a week works like a charm and exfoliate your face exfoliate using a good scrub a good scrub with fine granules do it at least three times a week and that is you have nose the the blackheads and whitehead in your nose when you squeeze like that you see all of that when you are exfoliating your face exfoliate in circular motion i personally like baking soda yes 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 i said it i love baking soda and coconut oil or baking soda with some citric acid they are, the other day i share a quick video using some baking soda with some lemon for oily skin people black and whitehead once a week, you do that on your skin, it's going to help. So what I suggest that you do is the steam and then you exfoliate. However, if it is severe, like, you know, one that like that big hole and you see the get that tweezer that is made to extract blackheads from the skin and press it down. If you have to use your finger, make sure you wash it. You sterilize it like you're going to do an operation or something like that. You wash it. If all in doubt, go ahead and get your gloves and put it on and get that out. So that's out. Because it doesn't matter what I come and tell you, don't touch your face. We're going to touch our face regardless. That is just human nature. Okay. You have a pimple, you play with it till you can't play with it no more. You just can't avoid uh, touching it. So I'm just suggesting to you, if you have to touch it, make sure your hands are clean or whatever tool you're using, you go ahead and you make sure it's also sterilized. TTT, Chichi, glad to see you got your nails done like you used to. You look pretty. Thank you so much. Yes, I used to, and I used to get a lot of feedback, but I want to feel myself this year, okay? All right. Um, can I use a mecca coal liquid to exfoliate? The honest truth is, I have no idea what that is, and I learn a lot on this channel. So if you are watching and you know what that is, let me know because I will have to research that when I am done. As a matter of fact, I think this is the first time I'm seeing this. Don't know if I pronounce it right, but it's mecca coal. 
Oh, and it could be something that we're familiar with, but it's, you know, um, different name, different region. Um, um, Adam, I, Keisha, when you exfoliate your face, do you wash your face before um, or do you exfoliate right away? When you exfoliate, okay, very, very good question. Very, very, very good question. Now, if you wear makeup, definitely wash your face before you exfoliate because you need to get rid of all of that makeup and stuff like that on your face before you exfoliate. There are some exfoliator that you can use to exfoliate your face without washing your face before. I like to wash my face before I exfoliate, okay? I don't know why, it's just my practice. So I tend to wash my face, but I do wear makeup. So I get rid of all of that, and then I exfoliate my face. Now, to each his own, you can choose to ex wash first and exfoliate after, or you can just use the exfoliator to exfoliate. For instance, if you're using like the lemon and the baking soda or some lemon and brown sugar, you might not need to wash your face before you exfoliate that you could go straight ahead but if you're using like a very very mild exfoliator then you can choose to wash your face before but i tend to just wash my face and then i exfoliate very 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 good question and if you steam your face you could also rinse your face off and then you steam and then you exfoliate okay but to each his own you know just do what you are comfortable doing now back to the oils thank you margaret for bringing me back to the oils all right guys one of my favorite oil to use on my channel which i preach every day is grapeseed oil. And why do I use grapeseed oil for oily skin? It's one of the better oil out there that is going to have to keep the skin looking good without a feeling greasy. And I have my grapeseed oil and I use this. And the honest truth is, guys, sometimes you notice I have this bottle and you might be like, why is it always like a little in the bottle? That because I bought a big jug of, <laughs> of um, grapeseed oil and I tend to pour it in the bottle because um, I'm trying to get a smaller bottle also. Because because when I'm trying to flame, sometimes I can't be pouring from that big old bottle. And I like when people see that I'm really using the oil. I don't like to like just pour in a nice like a glass jar. And, you know, I like to people to see. It's just me. I just like to show the product. But this is one of my favorite oil. And if you come to my house right now, you're going to notice that I have grapeseed oil in the hero where I flimmed. And I'm going to have grapeseed oil in the kitchen because I do use the grapeseed oil to cook also. I use it to make salad if I'm frying an egg and all this kind of thing. No, I don't eat eggs, guys, to be honest. But I do make for my family. But it's the easiest way to say, you know, if you're frying an egg. But I do do that just egg thing. But anyway grapeseed oil is an amazing oil and i'm gonna um pour this oil in my and no i like let me see it's gonna come out a little heavy on me right now because i'm using this big bottle right for those of you who are new to my channel and you're not accustomed to the grapeseed oil this is what it looked like it's a very very let me put it on the back of my hand it's a very very light oil and it's just gonna absorb in the skin just like that for those of you who try grapeseed oil have been using grapeseed oil and oily skin now is the time i'm asking you all to come in so i just apply the grapeseed oil on my hand like that and it's just gonna disappear on the skin and just take a look at that and I did put a little oil on my hands before I came on the show but that is just how it just seeped in the skin now why do we want to use grapeseed oil and oily skin it's an oil that is very very light and when you apply it on the skin the skin is going to feel hydrated so the sebum you're going to produce less sebum because the skin is now going to think okay it already have enough oil it already have enough oil so it's not going to produce in more oil this is one oil that actually penetrates trait the epidermis okay so that is why it makes it good and not only that it is rich in vitamin c and it's rich in vitamin e that means it can also help to brighten the skin and it also help to hydrate the skin anyone can use grapeseed oil but if you have oily skin this is one oil that you can try now i do know and i get a lot of feedback from some of my jamaican subscribers they're like the grapeseed oil is so expensive and I one of my subscribers sent me like a little bottle like this with grapeseed oil and pay a bit of a penny for it I am actually very very you know um sorry that you guys have to be paying so much for the grapeseed oil but guys here is the trick and I shared this with you all before don't forget 
that you all have in abundant soy oil. And soy oil is a little heavier than the grapeseed oil. But if you don't have this grapeseed oil, you can go ahead and you can use that soy oil. It will have just as the grapeseed oil. It's not that heavy and it's not that light. It's somewhere in the middle, but it is good for oily skin. And soya bean is what we are talking about. So if you have tried the grapeseed oil before, guys, go ahead and comment and let me hear from you. Margaret, for me, it's best oil for anyone that has oily skin. I use it with or without an essential oil. And thank you for that, Margaret. And um, Juliana, Chichi, how are you? I missed last week due to personal reason. Glad to, to be here. And I'm glad you are back. Mac, uh, Michelle, Manicure, can you talk about skin over 50? Suddenly, I have peach fuzz. And believe it or not, a lot of us here are over 50. All right. So skin, if you're li listen to me, skin over 50, you're right here. This is what we do. And most of what I share on the channel is what I personally use on my skin. And I am over 50. Okay. So just watch and listen to what we're talking about when you, but since you asked the question, I'm most likely you're new to the channel. Let me answer you really, really quick. When you are at a certain age, 50 and above, what you're going to notice, you're going to notice wrinkles and fine lines start to pop up. You're also going to notice a lot of little baby warts, moles, and all of that popping up on your face. You're also going to notice that your parentheses get a little deeper. You're going to notice some of you have the little upper lip wrinkle going on. And you're also going to notice that your chin, your jaw area is going to start to get sad. All of that is because we're getting older and we're losing collagen production. Not going to say we're whole. I don't want another attack on this channel. No. And that is because we're losing collagen production. What I personally do to keep my skin looking fresh and younger is to religiously practice a skincare routine. I see my face at least two to three times per week. I exfoliate my skin. I don't use just one exfoliator. I use a wide variety of exfoliator that I share on the channel. They're always most time natural based. However, another thing that I tend to do, I don't skip my beauty products. I use a facial toner. Most of the facial toner I use, I made them myself. One of my new found facial toner is my butterfly pea flowers facial toner mixed with the star anise. I really just to keep adding star anise to everything that I do for facial toner because I swear by it, it works on my skin. Now remember, everyone's skin is different and what worked well on mine might not necessarily work well on yours, but what do you have to lose? Absolutely nothing. All you have to do is to try. So I spritz my face with that facial toner and then I apply a facial serum. I normally make my own facial serum also. Most of the time my facial serum is aloe vera base. I tend to use the store-bought aloe vera base to make my serum. And then I would add stuff like green tea. I would have like matcha powder, butterfly pea flowers and stuff like that to make that serum. And then I use a moisturizer, which is normally one that I make which is rich in all these amazing oils that I share on the channel. So that's how I take care of my face. But there's one little trick that I do to my face religiously is to massage my face. I massage my face and do some facial exercises to keep away the wrinkles and the fine lines on my skin. So that is my practice for over 50. That's what I practice. And I also massage my neck because I don't want my neck to look older than my face. So if you are looking to take care of your skin over 50, then you're at the right place because we share some vital tips. Whenever I post a video and I'm like 50 look 30, it's normally a recipe that I use on my skin for you know, my 50 year upwards um, subscribers. And then also, you know, if you're on the 50, you can use it, but you understand what I am saying. So that is just a quick way of sharing what I do. And if you follow my channel religiously, you will see some of the things that I do to my skin. Because what I do, I share, and this is what keep my skin looking good. I mean, it could be better. I mean, I've been gaining a little weight here or there, and I think I need to tighten up my jawline a bit. So that's something I'm going to do a six week stretch up, tighten up my chin, all natural that is. And what I plan on doing this year also is to start to eat a little better 
I really need to start to eat a little better. I used to eat only vegetables and protein for years and years and years, to be honest. Only vegetable and protein. Never normally do the rice, the flour, and all of that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. And I used to be like thin and trim. I used to be like between 125 and if I get to 130, I'm starting to worry like I'm getting away close. And then if I get to 135, I was big. That's in my head. Now, I'm not even going to tell you guys how much I weigh right now, but believe it or not, had about 20 pounds onto the 135. And that that is the kind of things that is happening. And now I am not even eating some of the things I normally eat. And, you know, but anyway, it's, it's, it's about moving. Okay. You got to know your body. For me, if I don't move, I don't lose, believe it or not. So it doesn't matter sometimes, even if I'm trying to look, eat healthy, I st nothing is going anywhere. Everything is still there. Once I start to move and groove, that's when, you know, the pounds start to come off. And that's one, one goal that I have this year that I'm going to get rid of the pounds. I'm definitely going to, I don't want to be right back to 125. You know, I want to be like somewhere in the 135 zone and I want my skin to look good also. And if I lose this weight, my skin might look a little sad. So I will have to, you know, start to work on it. So those are some of the things that I do to keep my skin looking fresh. Now, I say, yeah, we are on the old wagon, Claudia, but we are fabulous with the great skin. Nana, I like your background. The lighting look good. And thank you. Um, Jawal for reaching out. Uh, Michelle, thank you, Martin. All right, so let's talk another, about another oil, papaya seed oil. How many of you have tried the papaya seed oil before? If you have tried a papaya seed oil, comment, comment, comment. You're asking about over 50 skincare, over 50 with oily skin, papaya seed oil. This was introduced to me by Rita. And I talk about this every day because I'm so grateful because I am a papaya girl. If you watch my videos, you know I use a lot of papaya. That is because you have wrinkles on the skin. Check out the guys. If you have papaya, you live somewhere where you have the papaya, don't shy away from it. It's really, really good for the skin. And if you have oily skin and you're looking for another oil that you can use on the oily skin, it's the papaya seed oil. I get mine off for Amazon. I'm just going to show you something right here. Now, look at that papaya seed oil. Remember, this is the same hand that I just applied my, my grapeseed oil on. And look at my hand. Look right here. After about a couple of minutes of applying the grapeseed oil, this is what I'm talking about. You you can see that it's not greasy at all. Right over it, now I'm adding that papaya seed oil. And look how this is just going to blend in the skin. It is not as light as the grapeseed oil, but guess what? It seeps right into the skin and it's not going to leave a greasy feel. I'm using a double, so it's not, I'm not even being fair to the papaya seed oil because we already have the grapeseed oil on it. But look how that, I hope it's coming across and camera good. You see that? Look how it just absorbed in the skin. And guess why I'm suggesting oily skin over 50? Because it's rich in vitamin A. It's an oil that is going to help to smooth wrinkles and fine lines and also boosts the collagen production in the skin without leaving the skin greasy. An amazing oil to load on your skin at night, massage it on the skin on top of your facial serum and you're on your way to not only getting rid of that oily skin, but you're on your way to getting rid of the wrinkles and fine lines. If you can get your hands on the papaya seed oil, go ahead. And if you can't get papaya seed oil and you have the fresh papaya, don't be afraid to blend it up, whip it up and use it on the skin. Use it to wash your face, use it as a facial mask and also go ahead and watch me use the seed to make your amazing facial serum, which I promise you all. One day you're going to notice that in a bottle. Now, I like to talk about this other oil, which is a cucumber seed oil. It's another oil. And some people were complaining. Um, I think some of these get sold out when I start bringing it on the channel. As a matter of fact, I think I'm one of the first person to bring the cucumber seed oil on YouTube. Now you're going to, you've seen it everywhere because as you all know, my channel is like a feeding tree, believe it or not, you know, but it's all good. It's all good. We have to share and, you know, help each other out. But if you can get your hands on the cucumber seed oil, it's another light oil for oily skin. And let me open mine right here. And just to prove, look at my hands, guys. I just put the papaya seed on top of the 
the grapeseed. And look, this is what I'm talking about. That's why I choose this oil. Good for oily skin. Now, I'm going to actually put, do you put the oil on after moisturizer? Now, you put your moisturizer on. Anything you're going to apply to your skin, the oil is the heaviest. And to apply beauty products on your skin, you go from lighter to heavier. So because oil are generally heavier than your moisturizer, it is recommended to put the oil on top of the moisturizer. However, what I like to do, I like to just take two to three drops of the oil and put in the moisturizer. And if I make my own moisturizer, then I don't use any additional oil because I make my moisturizer with all these amazing oil. If you do a store-bought moisturizer, whether it's high end, low end, or whatever, you're not going to have all these oils like I personally use in it. You're going to have like one special oil, like some rosehip oil or like some, you know, some cacao oil or just one. So I like to take a one to two drops um, and put in a moisturizer. But my home personal moisturizer or the moisturizers that I share on this channel page, you do not have to use any oil on top of them because I already made the moisturizer with the oil on the inside. Now, for the cucumber seed oil, and we are actually not doing it justice either because we're going to place it over the grape seed oil and the papaya seed oil. But this is also showing you all how light these oils are perfect for oily skin. If you're just joining, oh my goodness, this is actually lighter than the papaya seed oil, to be honest. And if you're just joining, we're sharing three oils right now that are good for oily skin. And I think I'll go a little OD on the cucumber seed oil, like I put away too much. But look at that. This is a layer of three oils on my skin. And just before the show is over, I'm going to come back. I'm not going to touch it. And I'm going to show you how it just absorbed in the skin. So you apply it on and you leave it on overnight or leave it on till whenever you are ready to use it it's gonna sink three oils on my hands right now and it's still not greasy and check out my hands in another two to three minutes you're gonna notice how it just now i didn't apply now you can see the difference this one is dry and this is the one that i've been using my stuff on you can clearly see the difference and you can see that this don't look much oilier than this one that we have nothing on that is because the oil no better better look look at that guys what happened to this one is that it look more fresher and it look it gets us like nice glow to it and this one just look dry okay and you can see how plumper this one is with three oils and this one just look dry but it's not greasy this don't look much different from this when it comes on to looking greasy and we apply three light oils that is good for oily skin on this we apply some grapeseed oil we apply some papaya seed oil and we apply some cucumber seed oil so any of these three oils you can use don't have to use all three one is enough so if you get cucumber seed oil use that two to three drops papaya seed oil use that grape seed oil two to three drops use that and if i make a video and i use other oils let's say i'm making a video and i'm using let's say um olive oil and you have oily skin get rid of the olive oil go ahead and use your grapeseed oil and if i'm making a video and i'm using let's say avocado oil well avocado oil is not very very light it's good for dry skin but it's good all skin type one to two drops so i don't normally like to tell people to omit the avocado oil however what you can do you can use a teaspoon of avocado oil and a teaspoon of the grapeseed oil mix it together so it's right somewhere right there in the middle you don't have to use the same oils that i use what i do i tell you the ingredients i tell you the vitamins that is in these oils so let's say we're using the cucumber seed oil which is rich in vitamin c and you have let's say some um sesame seed oil which is also rich in vitamin c then you can um, substitute you use what you have the trick is to show you how to make a combination mix a combination of ingredients to use on your skin that is just the base trick to it and you need to know if you're looking to reduce wrinkles you need an oil that have vitamin a if you're looking to clear pigmentation you need an oil rich in vitamin c if you're looking to hydrate the skin you have dry skin you need an oil that is rich in vitamin 
vitamin E and so on and so forth. Vitamin K, oil with vitamin K, you can use it under your eyes along with vitamin C. And also the omega-3, when you're starting to see the sign of aging, um, go ahead and reach for those oils with the omega-3 um, fatty acid so on and so forth that is what we do rose hip oil is good for oily skin yes but this is not i have it right here it is not as light as the other three but you can mix it as i said but if you're going to use the rose hip oil one to two drops let me show you the difference with the rose hip oil and i want to be fair to the rose hip oil so i'm just going to put a drop right here you can use the rose hip oil and oily skin, but the other oils are a little bit lighter. All right, so that's this the rose hip oil. And just by touching it, I could already tell you that is um it's more greasy, but it's still good, just a little. Now look at that. And I'm not trying to be unfair to the rose hip oil because it is one of my favorite anti-aging oil to use. But look at my hands with the rose hip oil compared to this hand that I apply three oils look at the rose and i'm giving a fear i'm rubbing it out like really really rubbing it out and you can see the difference right there one use of the rose hip oil you could still see it have a it look nice on the skin because a really good oil but for oily skin these three oils and this skin is um, much lighter than the rose hip oil so you can actually use a grapeseed oil put one drop one teaspoon one drop of the rose hip oil to get the vitamin a vitamin c and the vitamin e from the rose hip oil so mix it if you have oily skin and look at that guys just you know be the judge for yourself Three oils, one oil, which almost seems like this one of the three oils too, because the rosehip oil is a little bit uh, thicker. All right, Michelle, I mix flat seed, neem avocado, rosehip oil with cacao oil, butter, vitamin A, and a capsule for my face. And that is an amazing, as a matter of fact, I just ordered my cacao butter um, this week. It's an amazing mixture, and that's a perfect anti-aging oil. That can't get any better, believe it or not. You have the neem oil that is good for anti uh, antibacterial properties. So if you have those, you know, blackheads and pimples and all of that, that neem oil is going to take care of that. You also have the face famous avocado oil, which have all the electrolytes. As I said, for any oil that I share on my channel, that is one oil that have everything that you need for your face. Believe it or not, if you can get avocado oil, that is your oil, especially if you start to see wrinkles on fine line. You have the rosehip oil, which is right there behind the avocado oil, because the rosehip oil have the A, B, and C. And you also have my favorite cacao oil. Now, I use a lot of cacao oil, but I don't share much because because it tends to be on the pricier side, to be honest, depending on where you live. So that's why sometimes I don't. And some, some oils I try to avoid because I want I don't want people to feel left out. But if you can get your hands and the cacao oil, it do have more vitamin A than rosehip oil. And I talk about this a lot on the channel. However, it have less vitamin C. So for anti-aging skincare, over 50, over 40, Cacao oil is good. You can use the rose hip, but you can use the cacao for boosting collagen and reducing wrinkles and fine lines on the skin. And then you go ahead and you have the vitamin A and the vitamin C capsule. It's a complete facial. It's just like complete. To get the best result, you wash your face as often, you know, two to three times. You steam that face two to three times. You exfoliate that skin two to three times. You apply this on your face, and this is good to use AM and PM. And we're talking about Michelle um combination of Michelle moisturizer right here. And guess what, Michelle? You can actually, I don't know if you turn it into a cream, but if you choose to add a little bit of a, if you have a blender, you can make that nice and creamy by adding a little bit of a rose water and blend it out and it's going to come out into a moisturizer. And that is just amazing. Gwendolyn, how do you use argan oil? Argan oil is used as a carrier oil. I, because it's so on the pricey side, sometimes I try to, you know, behave like I'm using it like a special oil but it's really a carrier oil and you can apply it on your face directly one to two drops on your face or you can add one to two drops in your moisturizer however it is another oil that you can use in your hair you can use it on your nails you can use it all over your body you can actually you know use it step out of the shower make your skin a little damp applying all over your body and it's good and it's good to add a little bit of it in your body lotion it's an all-rounder oil that is good for most a skin type okay and use it up because the pet like where i live is expensive so definitely use it up but it's really 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 good good for the skin. Hi, Lorna. How are you? Um, 
Amina, I re recently came across the um, Baoba Bahoba oil and will be ordering a bottle soon. Ba am I? Do I lost you, um, Amina? Um, is it Baha Baha or ba, uh, ba? Let me write that down. All right. So, um, Razi, I, I start using cucumber seed oil after you suggest it. I love it on my dry skin. So watch the comment, guys. See, and um, who else is using the cucumber seed oil? Um, Nizi, Nezi, what about Bobo? Boba oil. Is it um over oil? Let me know if we're um talking about the over oil. Depending on where you live, the pronunciation is J O J O B O B O O J O Oba. Okay, J O J O B A. Is that what we're talking about? Let me know. Um. Can't you boil papaya seed in grapeseed oil to make papaya seed oil? Now I would suggest no. Now let me tell you why I'm suggesting. I mean. Can you boil papaya seed in grapeseed oil to make papaya? No. And the reason why I'm saying no, if you're going to boil papaya seed, you got to break the shell in the oil. Okay. The papaya seed, when you take the water from around it, which is what I use to make the serum, you're going to have that black seed. That black seed, if you're going to use it, you got to crack that shell to get to the kernel. That is what they use to make the papaya seed oil. Inside that little shell is the kernel. So if you want to get papaya seed oil and you're going to try the grapeseed oil method, you'd have to crack that little shell. Okay? No, because it's so small, then you probably need to just take something, pound it up, throw it in that oil once the thing is cracked, and then you slow, low oil and you probably be onto something like that because the kernel, once you put flame to the kernel, that is eat extraction and you might, you'll get the oil from it, but you got to crack that shell. Okay. All right. So try it and let me know and see how it works and come back and share. Taryn, I'm using the cucumber seed oil now. I need to steam tonight. So we have other people using the cucumber seed oil. And it is really good. For anyone who could get their hands on it, go ahead and give it a try. So if you're just joining, what did you miss? We talk about, you know, how to care for your oily skin. We also talk about, you know, um, massage in the face and, you know, how whether or not to use your fingers to extract blackheads and whitehead and we share the oils we share some cucumber seed some grape seed oil we share some papaya seed oil and we share some cucumber seed oil and we also do a live demonstration showing you how to use these oil on the skin so we're coming back to my hands and take a look guys this was where we apply our rose hip and this is where we apply the three oils three oils look at that guys I told you I was going to come back and show you what happened. Three light oils I apply on my skin. Now, the trick is not to overdo. You need no more than two to three drops on your skin. Do not take five, six, seven drops, and then you come back and tell me, oh, you said it's not oily, but look, it's oil. A little goes a long way. Two to three drops is all you need. Look at that. Three oils I apply on the skin. And I just want you all to take a look and see. And that is why these three oils are amazing for oily skin. Non-greasy, seep right into the pores. This is the one that we use the rosehip oil on. Still a very, very good oil. But for this with three oils, though they look the same, you could never tell that we use three oils on this and, and there you have it live, live, live. No camera trick to this. That is how you use these oil. So my time is up. It's Sunday evening. I'm going to cook this evening, okay? Yes, I'm going to cook. I'm going to try to flame it, okay? I post a video on my vlog channel where I make my little salad and I try to flame it and you guys don't watch it. So guess what? When you're finished with this, you're going to go and watch my vlog channel and watch my little salad that I made. I made a salad dressing in the beginning and I put the salad dressing in the beginning for you guys to see how I make my little salad dressing from scratch. So you can go and watch it on the vlog channel with the link is below and it's Chichi Beauty vlog. We're going to be posting on it and we need you to watch so that we could get the views going. If you don't watch it, then the system is going to be like, nobody's watching this channel. So go over there when the show is over. And guess what? Our Alex Maxi, if you have not subscribed to that channel, the link is below. Go and show some love 
and subscribe to the channel. It's our fashion channel and we're going to be posting content this week. So you got to look out for that and support the channel. And if you have not yet thumbs this video up, go ahead and show some love and thumbs the video up. This is Sunday Chit Chat. We're here every Sunday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On this channel, we also post daily videos. Even if you get no notification, just go back and check the channel page and you definitely will see a video post. Sometimes we even try to post two because we're trying to build up back our, you know, build up back our viewership. And we all know that you're not getting the we're not getting the, the notification and that is because a lot is going on with the system. But go come and visit the channel every day. Just show some love, watch the videos, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And please watch at least half of the videos because when you run and, you know, I know you want to support and you want me to know that you're supporting and you watch the, you click on the link and you comment, the system throw the comment out because you have to watch at least a three minutes of the video for it to think that you really watch the video okay so when you come on to support your favorite channel watch at least three minutes of the video so make sure you have the time to go at least three minutes thank you so much for watching today guys i hope you will have a great week and don't forget to take care of yourself it's the new year and what i'm trying to do this year is to get all of your skin to look good for 2022 2021 we struggle guys 2021 oh my goodness what a year what a year what a year and can you believe it that we're basically two years into covid like come on we need to get back our life together man we need to get back up and running we need to you know just feel good about ourselves and that's what i'm trying to do so thank you so much for joining be good to yourself i love you guys and i might have a pop-up show this week midweek maybe wednesday or so in the evening and guys you're not coming on over on our Zoom. You are missing out, guys. This week, Zoom was amazing, okay? It was good, like really, really good. But you're not going to know if it's good. And if you're new to the channel, you're wondering what we're talking about. We have a Zoom meeting, Pretty Awesome Blossom is the name of it. It's a group of women. We get together, we share thoughts and topics and stuff like that. And to join, you have to send your email to chichibeauty at gmail.com. Or you can get our link on our Facebook page, which is Chichi Awesome Blossom. And the link is also in the description. Or you can just go over to Facebook page and join Chichi Awesome Blossom. Awesome. So you'll see the link. We post the link. We're trying to post link early, like this week post. I think we post on Wednesday and then we post back again on Friday. So if you want to watch with us and comment and all of that, come on over this Friday. What we're asking you all to do, if you're coming on this Friday on our Zoom, we're asking you all to bring someone. So you're going to share the link with someone. Share the link with a friend. And when you come on, you tell us who is the person that you bring. So send for the link at chichibuti at gmail.com or get the link at Chichi Awesome Blossom. We're on the Zoom every Friday and we don't talk anything about skincare, okay? It's not about skincare. It's about personal issues, but really powerful, powerful, powerful. So thank you all. Remember, if you have not yet thumbs this video up, go ahead, thumbs the video up. Another thing we want you to do, as soon as you log off, just share this video on your facial, on your social on your Facebook page, okay? Just click the share button and share it on your facial, um, on your facial. You see, I'm so much into facial. And share it on your Facebook page. That is how you also help us to spread the word. You, you like a video, you like the live, share it on your social media page. Be good to yourself. Love you guys and welcome all my new subscribers. We're here for you. Feel free to come watch our show. Comment, 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 and be a part of the family. Thank you so much for joining. Join us next week, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another in our series, Sunday Chit Chat with Chichi Beauty. Have a good week, guys, and go and watch any video that is there now. Okay? Bye-bye.